What's going on, YouTube? Today we end our series of the top 10 players at the in the NFL at each position. Today we finish it off with our safeties. So without further ado, let's get into it. With our last honorable mentions for this year, we have Kevin Byard of the Titans, who I think for the most part has been pretty underrated most of his career. However, last year suffered pretty badly, and now he's literally the only uh, secondary player on that team unless Caleb Far Farley shows out in his first year. So uh, that kind of dropped him down to the honorable mentions here, but he is still a top 15 safety in the NFL. Marcus Williams for the Saints. I feel like Marcus Williams is a little overrated. He's a great safety, sure, but I feel like it's only really this last year that he's even played good and even then i think people kind of overrate how good this season this last season was um so i, I just want to see another year of similar production and stuff you know i think you know he needs to just show me a bit more than that and then derwin james derwin james is a top five safety when he's healthy but god is he ha does he have some issues staying healthy um I want to put him higher. It's just kind of hard because he is a great talent. He is a special talent, but it's kind of hard to put him against above some of these other guys when he's never on the field. So that is our last honorable mentions. Starting off with number 10, we have Jamal Adams. Played 12 games last year for the Seahawks. 64.2 PFF grade, 58 tackles, 11 sacks, not picks because he didn't have any picks. Uh, and a .804 catch allowed percentage. You know, Jamal Adams definitely, I think, enjoyed his uh, worst year in football last year. You know, dealt with a few uh, injury issues. Was not very good in the run game. He broke the safety record for sacks, sure. But a .804 catch percentage, that's allowing every four and five passes targeted your way to be caught. And it's not like he had low... Um, it's not like he had low target numbers. So Jamal Adams, I still think he's a top 10 safety. Uh, he still makes an impact for sure. But I think looking back on that two, uh, two first rounder trade, uh, I don't see him being worth that at all right now. So Jamal Adams at number 10, still a top 10 safety, like I said, but just on paper and really playing, he's not the best coverage safety, but Number nine, we have Eddie Jackson of the Bears, who also didn't have the best year last year. Now, he stayed healthy, 59-point AFP, PFF grade, 71 tackles, no picks, and a 7-4-2 catch allowed percentage. Um, you know, it's obviously better than uh, Jamal Adams. Still kind of high up there, though. Safeties typically aren't the best in coverage. Um, you know, they just do more important things. Eddie Jackson covers the entire top of the field for the Bears, and it's respectable enough you know their corners especially now really really suck so he's going to be tested a lot more than he normally will and i think that might drop him a little bit plus he's just not their best run defender in the world and stuff so eddie jackson here at number nine because he is probably gonna have a pretty bad year next year to be honest with you Number eight, we have Devin McCourty of the Patriots. Played all 16 games, 65.2 PFF grade, 49 tackles, two picks, and a 7-6-0 cap uh, is what I call it. Um, yeah, I mean, out of the safeties featured on this list so far, again, besides Derwin James when he's healthy, the best numbers, but they're obviously not the best in the world. But he stays healthy, stays consistent. He is still pretty, he's actually still really good at pass coverage, even if the numbers don't necessarily show it. He allows one of the lower, um, or he has one of the lower target uh, numbers in the NFL. So he allows, you know, somewhat of a high cap, but he's not targeted all that much. So Devin McCourty, you know, he's starting to get up their age. I think that's going to naturally <clears throat> bring us down his play and stuff like that, but still a top eight safety in my opinion. Uh, and the safety list was a very difficult thing to do, but I think eight is the right placement for him. And then here at number seven, we have Buda Baker, who I feel is like being really 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 overrated by the nfl right now he had a great year i mean yeah sure 15 games 75.3 pff grade 92 tackles two picks and a 0.685 cap besides derwin james when he's healthy again he's the best safety on this list so far but i feel like people putting him like the top five or i've even seen top three believe it or not i think is a little ridiculous i think even number seven is pretty generous right now because yeah again he had a great year but it wasn't really like that great and it's really his first year of ever 
doing any sort of production like this. So if he shows me another year similar to this, sure, yeah, he can be a top five guy next year. But I feel like right now he's definitely not. And people saying that he is need to cool the brakes. So number six, we have Micah Hyde. I feel like the NFL has just kind of forgotten about this guy. Everyone has just kind of forgotten about this guy. 15 games last year, 68.7 PFF grade, 59 tackles, one pick, and a 578 cap. Has the lowest cap so far out of any players on this list. But I don't know why people really seem to forget about this guy. He's a really, really good safety. He's great over the top. He, he plays that role very well. Gets in on the run game when he wants. Uh, not like like he, he's good when he does get in the run game. Uh, as you see, he has he has a very good cap against one of the more higher target numbers in the league. Like, sure, maybe on paper he doesn't look that good, but like he's still a top. 10 safety and I have him at six personally. I, I don't know why everyone's completely forgotten about this guy. Micah Hyde, in my opinion, is a top 10 safety. So I have him here at number six. Number five, we have Harrison Smith. I know a lot of people are going to not like this placement, but yeah, he played all 16 games. Yeah, he was great. I mean, look at the numbers. 74.3 PFF grade, 65, five picks, 6.53 cap. Here's the thing. He's getting older, first off, so it, like normal, especially for like someone like a safety that's going to decline your play. Um, Harrison Smith, to me, just does not feel on that same level he was even just a couple years ago, even really just the year before this last one, which I guess would be a couple years ago. Um, two or three years ago, you know, he, I just feel like he's not the same player. He's not quite as good. No, he's still the number five safety in the league, in my opinion. He's still a top five guy, but I feel like... He's just not on that same level. He's only going to get worse, and that Vikings defense is still pretty god-awful. He doesn't really play the role where he's going to help out the entire defense by covering the top and stuff. He kind of does his thing in his area, and he's great there, but I think that's going to kind of get overshadowed by how bad that Vikings defense will probably be again in 20, uh, 2021. So I have a vibe. I still think he's a top-five safety. He's still a great player, but I just don't feel like he's as good as he used to be. So... Number four, we have Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger. 15 games, 64.1 PFF grade, 56 tackles, 6 picks, and a 6.66 cap. Tyron Matthew's great. I don't know what else to say about that. Stays healthy, stays consistent. I mean, he gets it on the run game. He's one of the elite players in the NFL in pass coverage. Um, or maybe one of the more devilish players in pass coverage. Um, six picks, you know, I, all around, he's a fantastic player. Uh, I think people really underrated him. I don't really know why. I mean, I still see a lot of people saying he's a top 10 safety, but I think he's top five, and I really don't see a lot of people with that same opinion. And I don't know why, because I think this guy is a fantastic safety. He's a big reason why that Chiefs defense is as good as they are when they need to be. He shows up in the big moments, so I have him here at number four. Really sorry that I still sound sick. Number three, we have Jesse Bates the third, who enjoyed a fantastic breakout campaign last season. Started all 16 games, had a 90.1 PFF grade, 87 tackles, three picks, and a 5.42 cap. Super low cap, high numbers all across the board. He's an elite run defender when he gets in on that game. Stays healthy, stays consistent across that one season. I know a lot of people have him as their number two or number one even. It's one season. I want to see another season, even close to the type of production that he had this year. If so, very well could be the number one or number two. Um, I just feel like if you compare him to the, the, the next two guys on this list, like I don't feel like he has as difficult of a job. It will be made a little bit more difficult, well, a lot more difficult now that William Jackson is gone. So we'll see how he handles that. I, I think he can step up to the pressure, but we'll really have to see how he handles that pressure. So for right now, I have him at three. He could very well drop. He could very well get higher. I just want to see another year of that. But Jesse Bates was fantastic last season. I think he was probably the best safety in football last season, to be honest. Number two, we have John Johnson the third. Um, 16 games, 85.6 PFF grade, 79 tackles, one pick, and a 7.61 cap. On paper, doesn't look as good as some of the other guys, but he is a fantastic run defender and has one of the lower target rates in the NFL. You know, he played great for the Rams, and obviously he had a lot of help with Jalen Ramsey, Darius Williams, Aaron Donald, but the Browns defense is near as scary. So, you know, he's not downgrading that much in that defense. I think he can step up and play an even bigger role there in Cleveland. Um... He's not going to be that over-the-top guy. That's not the, play, the way he plays. But unlike Harrison Smith, he's going to take care of his zone. And since the rest of the defense can actually do their job as well, I think he can play elite. And a, another guy that could very well be the number one on this list next year. For right now, I have him at number two. I just personally think he's... I would take him over Jesse Bates right now just because he's been a bit more consistent over the past couple years rather than just this last year. But I still do really love John Johnson and Jesse Bates. But I have him at two. 
But number one is going to be Justin Simmons for the Broncos. Started all 16 games, 77.4 PFF grade, 80 tackles, 5 picks, and a 7.69 cap. Again, at first, the numbers are not going to tell you he's the best safety in football. But listen, he stays healthy, stays consistent. He's great in the run game, great in pass coverage. Like he's, again, one of the elite in pass coverage. Um, has one of the lower target rates in the NFL and still a, a decent cap. I mean, it's not the best comparison of these other guys. But the thing that really sticks out about Justin Simmons is how much he does for Denver's defense. He sticks over the top consistently. He defends everything across the field past 20 yards. And this is when he had Bryce Callahan, Will Parks, Michael Ojabudia. So now that you give him Kareem Jackson, Kyle Fuller, Ronald Darby, Patrick Sertan, I think Justin Simmons is now not going to have to, he's not going to have to like take care of that entire defense now. And I think he's going to excel with that. These are somewhat predictions somewhat right now. I think Justin Simmons was the second best safety in football last year. And I think now that with that defense expanded with his role now having to be more limited than what it was before, I think Justin Simmons is going to explode and have his absolute best season yet and solidify himself as the best safety in football. But that is the end of our series. We have done the top 10 players in every position in the NFL for next season. We're currently doing our 2022 draft position ranking so if you want to get those don't forget to leave a like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload thank you guys so much for watching and watching the series and i will see all you guys in the next video Bye bye